Hi, what I'd like to work for you today is a problem that's a little bit different than some of the circuits problems you have probably seen up till now. Uh, this problem is different because there are some unknown resistances in here and we are given some data about uh, various voltages or currents that are directly measured with multimeters in this circuit. So the first thing I want to do with this is I would like to describe how a voltmeter and how an ammeter, a current meter, behave when they are in a circuit. So that's the first thing I'll do here is that a voltmeter basically behaves as if it has infinite uh, resistance. Okay, what that mean? Uh, what that means is that we can assume that there is essentially zero current that will flow through any uh, what might seem to be branches that are created by connecting a voltmeter no current uh, or very very negligible current will flow on those legs of the circuit so uh, that allows us to understand what goes on in the circuit when they are connected and then for an ammeter which is um, the term that we often use to talk about something that measures current it's actually on the exact opposite end of that spectrum uh, basically zero resistance Okay, and what that means is that we pretend like it's not there. We pretend like the current can go right through that ammeter and it has no effect, it has no uh, resistance that is added because the, uh, the ammeter is in place. And so those are the two things that we're going to have to use uh, whenever we look at this uh, circuit here. All right, so let's get, get into it and start looking at the specifics of this circuit. Um, we know uh, not only the voltage values of these voltage sources, the 14.4 and the 3.7 volt uh, sources that are in series up here. We also know the current that is measured on this leg of the circuit over here. We also know the voltage that goes across this pair of resistors right here. We have a current over here that we know that goes through the 16 ohm resistor. And we have a voltage here, V2, that goes across this uh, little set of resistors over here. And what we're supposed to find are all the resistance values of these unknown resistors, R1, R2, R3, and R4. And then, as kind of an extra thing there, also figure out how much power is dissipated by each one of those resistors. All right, where I'd like to start with this is to do a quick redrawing of this circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it with a just one source here and it goes across a one ohm resistor and that one source by the way 14.4 volts plus 3.7 volts gives you 18.1 volts okay this is our one ohm resistor uh, and now this goes down through this four ohm resistor and as well as it goes through the R2 resistor, which we don't know the value of, and then that kind of comes down like this. Uh, it goes back through this 3 ohm resistor, and then I'm going to eliminate that uh, current meter right there because, again, I said it's like, it's like it provides no resistance whatsoever, so we can pretend like it's not there, and we can instead, maybe if we want to, we can put in a little arrow okay, that says the current that was flowing on that line right there is going to be 980 milliamps. Okay, And then over here, again, we didn't know this value of R1, so I'm going to put that in right here as R1. Okay, now let's go ahead and draw the rest of the circuit as well. Okay, Over here, I have an 8 ohm, and then we have a 26 ohm, and then this comes down through the 9 ohm, and then we have another leg that goes over here where it goes through R4. This comes down and goes through this 7 ohm resistor. So I'll label some of these real quick. And down here we have a 9 ohm. Here is R4. 
this is 7 ohms okay over here this is our 11 ohm then this goes across through this 16 ohm okay and again like I said before I'm going to eliminate this current meter I2 and instead I'll say I know the current that flows right here is 110 milliamps okay and this is that 16 ohm resistor then down here I have a series of three resistors and because we know that these series resistors add uh, when they're in series like this instead of showing it as three what I'm going to show is just one and instead of calling it uh, something else I'll call it three three R3 right there's three values of R3 that exist right there all right the other thing that I'm going to add while we're here is uh, what we get out of a voltmeter again a voltmeter doesn't allow any current to flow through it that's one of our assumptions here is that it's got like its infinite resistance so no current will flow through this multimeter no current will flow through this multimeter. Instead, what they're giving us is just a little snapshot of what the voltage is across that particular leg of the circuit. And so what I'm gonna do here is show this as V1. That means that between here and down here, I happen to know that that's 9.4 volts because of the reading that I had on that multimeter right there. Okay, additionally, I know that between right here and right here, I have 3.9 volts across between those two uh, nodes right there. Okay, um, that is actually probably a good thing for us to do now is to identify nodes where current can split. So let me do that. Here's a node where current can split right here. Okay, let me do another node this is another node where there's a, a branch in the circuit okay and when you do these just to remind anyone who hasn't seen this before you basically uh, any place where there's a branching part of the circuit you kind of color in and you color that everywhere where there's a wire that that connects and all the way up to the uh, adjacent components to that wire okay so those are two nodes that I've identified right there this is another node right here where current can split. Okay. Uh, there's another node over here where current branches or, or can branch. And then lastly, we'll go over here. There's another node here Okay. So those are the uh, the nodes that I have on this circuit and then now I've got also the other pieces of information that I know labeled on here so where do we start okay this is this is some information that we have um, and I've drawn it in a little bit hopefully more more digestible of a way okay um, here's what I'll say uh, it looks to me like we can easily uh, come up with a sum of, of voltages around a particular loop that might be very helpful to us. And here's the specific loop that I would like for us to look at uh, very first thing here. Okay, There's a loop that basically goes right here. So it kind of starts here, goes around here, goes over here, and back up here. Okay, And what Kirchhoff's voltage law says is that when we sum voltages uh, around a loop like that, if you if you sum that up, it should sum to zero. Or another way of saying that same thing is that all of your voltage rises should balance your voltage drops. Okay, so the 18.1 volt is basically the only voltage rise that I have because it's my only energy supplying element there. So I have an 18.1 volt. rise I have I'm saying here that has to be equal to the drops that I have 
Now, here's why this is so powerful. We actually happen to know that the current in the 3 ohm resistor, the R1 resistor, and the 1 ohm resistor, all of those have to be 980 milliamps because there's no other place for the current to go, at least on that leg. Now, we don't know that that's the current that goes to the 4 ohm and the R2 because the current has an opportunity to split here, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But we do know that it's the current that has to flow up and around here. And so one of the things I can say there is that we're probably dropping 180 milliamps times 1 ohm because um, the uh, Ohm's law would basically say V equals IR. I is 980 milliamps. R is 1 ohm. So that tells me that right here I would have a voltage across right there of 980 milliamps times 1 ohm and that would basically say the drop right there would be 0 0.98 volts. Okay, does that make sense? But I'll write it like this. I'll basically write it as 980 milliamps, which is just 0 0.98 amps. times 1 ohm. Okay. Now, it would be tempting to say, well, could I do that same thing down through this leg right here? The problem is we don't know yet what the current is that flows down through the 4 ohm and the R2, but we don't need to because we happen to know that this is a 9.4 volt drop that goes across here because we're measuring it directly with that multimeter up there, V1. So I'll basically say this is going to be a 9.4 volt drop right there. All right, now that takes us down here to where our next drop is through the 3 ohm resistor and it's going to drop by 980 milliamps which is 0.98 amps times 3 ohms. Okay, and then our last drop that we have is going to be through the R1 resistor so plus uh, 0.98 amps. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. Okay, times R1. And this gives us a one variable equation that we can now solve for R1. Okay. Let me show you something in case you haven't seen this before. This calculator is really nice because you can enter an equation like this directly without having to manipulate any of the terms. So we can put in 18, oops, 18.1 is equal to uh, 0.98 <clears throat> times 1 plus 9.4 plus uh, 0.98 times 3 plus 0.98 times x. Okay, and when I've got all that in there, if I hit shift solve, which is right up here, shift solve, it then asks me, do you want to solve for x? That's the variable I put in there. Yes, I do. The number it shows right here, we won't get big into that, but this is like an initial guess that it needs in order to start doing this sophisticated guess check technique that is built into the calculator. You don't need to know a whole lot about that for this problem because it doesn't really matter what we guess. It's going to be okay with just about anything that we guess right there. So the next keystroke is just equals. And this comes out to be 4.8775. Make sure there. 77, we'll say it's 6 ohms. Okay. And there we've gone ahead and found the first value that we cared about on this problem. All right. Good so far. We're, we're making good progress. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to show here is uh, we, we actually can come up with some other things on this circuit that may be valuable to us. Um, one of them, for instance, is 
that um, if I know that this 110 milliamps is going through a 16 ohm resistor right here, that actually is enough information to know what the voltage is that goes across from here to here. And actually I should, shouldn't have it that direction. This should be the positive end over here. How do I know that? That's a good question. How do I know that that's the positive end? Well, you can kind of look, if, it's, if the circuit is simple enough like this one, you can tell here that the current has to be driven from the positive side of the battery, which is this side, to the negative side of the battery. It's, it's going to get pushed over on to this side relative to the side that's closer to the negative side. And when that happens, it leaves the positive side of this voltage drop over there on the side that's nearer to the positive side of the battery. Okay, so, um, and what I'm saying is I can figure out what that voltage is based on this 110 milliamps and the 16 ohms that I have right there. So that's the next thing that I'll do. In order to get that, 110 milliamps is just 0.11 amps. So I'll take 0.11 and multiply it by 16 ohms. Okay, that gives me 1.76 volts across here. Okay, and that's just showing the power of, you know, if you know uh, a particular value, uh, like current, for instance, going across through here, um, you can use that value to find another value that might be useful to you as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put that on here, that 1.76 volts. Uh, are there any other things that we can do that are kind of like that? Well, actually, yes, there is, because you know that this is 3.9 volts that goes from this node to this node. That tells you that you have enough information to solve, for instance, for how much current flows just through this leg that goes through the 26 ohm and through the 9 ohm resistor over here. How do you know that? Well, um, again, uh, Ohm's law applies here, and so what we would say there is that 3.9 volts would be equal to the current that we're trying to find, okay? And I could just say maybe I, uh, maybe just call it I26. Okay, because that's the current that goes through the 26 ohm resistor. It's also the current that goes through the 9 ohm resistor. So we'll just call it I26 for this. Uh, or 20, let me do this. I have 20 through the 26 ohm uh, resistor uh, times the resistance value total that goes on that leg over there, which is going to be 26 ohms plus 9 ohms. Okay. And so from here, I through the 26 ohm, which by the way is the same as the I that goes through the nine ohm. Okay, I'll just go ahead and name this over here. I 26 ohm. This is going to be equal to 3.9 divided by the sum of 26 and nine. Okay, and that gives me uh, basically, we'll say uh, 111.4 milliamps, okay? Or if we do this as amps, it'll just be 0.11143 amps, okay? Now that's not something I'm really uh, tasked with finding, but it is something that could be handy in just a minute, so I'm just going to note this over here. 0.11143 amps. All right. So what? Okay, now you might be thinking to yourself, I don't see necessarily where to go from here. We're still supposed to find an R2. We're supposed to find an R4 and an, and an R3. What's next after this? All right. Well, maybe we should find another voltage loop. Okay. I think that would be uh, a helpful technique for us to try to use. <clears throat> it worked really well over here on the left. Let's try to find one over on the right. Okay. And so that's what I will do. What if we take a loop that goes 
basically around here. So it'll go all the way around here, around here, and back up through here. Okay, that's something that we can do. <clears throat> so as we do this, um, it's very important that we we know whether we are, have a rise or a fall as we go through here. And one way to know that is if you encounter a negative sign first as you kind of pass one direction around the loop, um, you can decide if that's going to be positive or negative. I actually think it's good to make that positive because it's like it's a voltage rise, just like as if it's a battery over here. So there's a voltage rise of 9.4 volts across this little segment right here. So I'm going to take that, say 9.4 volt rise, okay? And then we're going to have a drop here, and this is a this is a current value that goes through this 8 ohm resistor. So let me just call this for a second I through R8. Alright, maybe to be consistent with our last one, uh, I through the 8 ohm. That'd be better. All right, so the I through the 8 ohm, by the way, because you look at this, it may split right here, that I through the 8 ohm may split at this green node, but it actually, those two values of current would come back together over here at the purple node, and that's gonna be the same current that has to go through this 11 ohm resistor over here. It's the same exact current, so I'm going to go ahead and label it the same. This is I through 8 ohm. I know that seems a little weird since it's also going through the 11 ohm. I want to name it the same thing though because it's going to have the same value and that's, you know, if you want to actually put a law behind it, it's because of Kirchhoff's voltage law, or excuse me, current law. Whatever current uh, splits right here, those currents come back together and go down through the 11 ohm resistor right there. All right, so I have this 9.4 rise, and then I have a drop. Okay, I'll do this one instead of having rises equal drops, I'll just make rises positive and drops negative. I have a drop here of uh, the I going through the 8 ohm multiplied by the 8 ohm resistance value that I have right there. That's the, the voltage that drops right there. Okay. The other thing is that the voltage drops by 3.9 volts going from uh, the green node over to the purple node. And I don't have to deal with any currents or anything when I do that. I just happen to know that it drops by 3.9 volts because I'm measuring that directly with the multimeter. Okay. Now I have another drop of, and it's going to be I, again I'll name it I across the 8 ohm, even though that's also the I that goes across the 11 ohm, and it is going to be multiplied by 11 ohms, because we're de dealing with the voltage that drops there on the 11 ohm resistor. We then have another drop uh, of 1.76 volts that goes across uh, between the orange and the blue node over here and that makes it all the way around that loop that I identified okay so we set this equal to zero and if we plug these into our solver again this is where the solver gets really nice is it keeps you from having a factor or anything that would be a little laborious perhaps like that okay I'll use x for my variable that I'm trying to solve for, uh, times 8, all right, minus 3.9, minus, again, x, but now that gets multiplied by 11, minus 1.76, and we're saying this has to sum to 0. Again, shift solve and hit equals, and that tells me now that the current that must pass through the 8 ohm resistor is 0.1968 uh, amps. Okay. 
Okay. Again, we still haven't gotten to where we need to go, but I'm going to show you why this is such an important value for us to have. I mentioned Kirchhoff's current law just a second ago. Let's apply Kirchhoff's current law now to this yellow node that we have up here at the top. We happen to know that 980 milliamps comes into this node right here. Okay, this is 980 milliamps. Now we know that this current that goes out right here is basically 196.8 milliamps if I want to match the the units there. Okay, what that tells me is that um, I must have extra current that isn't passing through the 8 ohm resistor and is instead passing down through this direction. Okay, and so let me just call this maybe uh, I, I'll call it I sub R2, meaning that's the current that passes down through this little leg right here and it's that entire current will pass through that R2 and so let me calculate for what IR2 must be okay and this is again I'll just put it right here using uh, KCL IR2 has to be equal to the 980 milliamps which is going to be 0.98 amps Okay, minus the 196.8 milliamps, which is just 0.1968 amps. Okay. Kind of like this. All right. So now we end up with 0.7832. amps. All right, you still might be thinking, well, why does that really help us in any way? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked, because the next step, now that we know that current, is <clears throat> that we need to use that current along with Ohm's law again, and look at the voltage drop across the combination of the 4 ohm and the R2. Okay. Ohm's law would say that V equals IR, which tells us that 9.4 volts is equal to that current IR2, which is going to be 0.7832 amps, times the resistance through that entire leg from, you know, across where we have the 9.4 volts. And that entire resistance is going to be 4 ohms plus R2. Well, that's something that we can solve for R2. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Let's see here. We will have, um, I'll just enter it as this equation. 9.4 is equal to 0.7832 times 4 plus x. Okay. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us here that this uh, resistor value is going to be equal to 8.002 ohms. Okay, and that is one of the values that we were trying to look for, so I'm going to put a box around that one. All right. Tell you what I'll also do while I'm here is let me put in this value for this current. This current right here is 0.7832 amps. In case we need that here in a minute. All right. Where to next? All right. Um, well, let's actually use Kirchhoff's current law again only now, instead of using it over here, let's use Kirchhoff's current law over here so that we can figure out the amount of current that, instead of the amount that passes up here, which we already found, 
the amount of current that passes down through this segment. Okay, so again, let me label this as using KCL. And what we'll say here is that I have 196.8 milliamps that comes in here. All right, so 196. Well, I'll do this instead of with milliamps. Let me do it with amps. So 0.1968 amps, okay, is equal to uh, the amount that goes over here, which is 0.11143 plus whatever comes down here, which we don't happen to know that value yet. So let me call that value I. R4. Okay. And that's what goes down through there. So I'll just actually add on to here I R4. Okay. And based on this expression, I R4 can be found to be, let's see, um, 0.1968 minus 0.11143 and that gives me 0 0.08537 amps okay well is that is that going to be useful to us in some way um, hopefully or else uh, this has not been all that helpful. I would actually suggest that we can use it the same way that we did a minute ago for this little leg right here. We can say we have another leg that's very similar that goes down right through here. We know the voltage across that combination of resistors and we know the current that passes through that combination of resistors. And so that tells us here that um, the resistor value R4 can be found with 3.9 volts being equal to 0 0.08537 amps. That's the current uh, that passes through that little leg right there um, times the resistance there. And the re total resistance uh, across that 3.9 volt drop is going to be equal to R4 plus 7 ohms. Okay, and so when I solve this for R4, which I will do now, 3.9 is equal to 0 0.08537 times here I'll put in an X plus 7 and I'll solve for X and that tells me that that resistance value there should be 38.68 ohms okay Pretty good, huh? We're we're actually doing pretty well here because we only have one more um, one more big thing that we need to find, and it again depends on us using uh, Kirchhoff's current law. But this time we are going to do it over here on this uh, orange node, okay? And over here on this orange node, uh, what you'll notice is that the current will again split, and we happen to know that so some of it goes here. Some of it's coming in here, and some of it goes around here. Okay. Well, we happen to know this is 110 milliamps. We know right here this is 196.8 milliamps. And so that tells us what we have left over comes around down here, and we can figure that out by subtraction again. Okay. So, we'll say using... KCL on the orange node, and it may be helpful for me to actually do some 
highlighting here. That was that this one I'm about to do was for the orange node. The one I did just a second ago was one that I did, I believe, at the green node. That was this one. Okay. And then I did one down here. This was the first one that I did, and that was based on the yellow node. Okay. Probably it would have been helpful for me to do that along the way, but anyway, maybe that'll help clear these things up. All right, so now at the orange node, what I'm saying is that 196.8 milliamps, again, I will write that as 0.1968 amps. This is going to be equal to 110 milliamps, which is just 0.11 amps plus, okay, I'll say this is the current that goes through R3. Okay, and when I solve then for that current, I just take 0.1968 and I subtract from that 0.11. Okay, that gives me 0.0868. Amps. Well, how is that helpful? Well, I apply Ohm's law now. Okay, so I apply Ohm's law to this. And um, I can then see, um, you know, if I've got 1.76 volts, and I have 0 0.0868 amps, and that's all going across a total resistance of 3 R3. Well, then that tells me that R3 has to be equal to, okay, this one's actually super easy. We just basically take um, 1.76 and we divide it by 3 times 0.0868. Okay. And that tells me that that resistance value must be 6.759. Ohms. All right, so we're doing pretty well so far. We've actually got uh, R1, right? That was our first one we got up there. We got R2 down here, we got R3 right here, we got R4 right there. So we're doing really well. We've basically completed part A of this problem. Okay, now let's look at part B real quick because the other thing we're supposed to try to find is the power dissipated by those four resistors as well. So fortunately, we actually know, I believe, for each one of them, how much current flows through them, as well as the resistance value that we've uh, computed for each one. So I think that makes our lives here pretty easy. Easy. Okay. Uh, let me drop a little space right here, just so I can put this little quick computation in. Okay. I'll call this P1. P1 is equal to I squared, right? The I that we're talking about is the I that goes through this, um, oh, I'm on the wrong one. The I that flows through R1 is this 980 milliamps. It flows right up through here this way. So 0.98 amps squared times that resistance value, which was 4.8 776 ohms. And that gives us 4.684 watts. Okay. So that's P1, that's the power for resistor one. 
how do I figure out my power for resistor two? All right, well, I guess I gotta drop way down here. Before I drop way down there, I'll go back up here. What was my current through resistor two? Because that may be something that I need. The current through resistor two was 0.7832 amps. If I take that, square it, and multiply it by R2 value, that gives me uh, the, the power dissipated in R2. Okay, so P2 is going to be equal to 0.7832 amps squared times that resistance value, which was 8 0.002 ohms. Okay, so that squared times 8.002. Now that gives me 4.908. Watts. Okay, so I've got that one. Now we only have two more powers we gotta compute. We go up here to R3, and we, again, we happen to know the current through R3 and the value of R3. So to find that, we again just take that 0 0.0868 amps squared and multiply it by 6.759 ohms. Okay. Point oh eight six eight squared times six point seven five nine. That gives me point oh five oh nine or so. watts. Okay, and the next thing we do is go up and deal with R4. Again, we know the current through R4, and now we're going to use that with the uh, resistance. So P4 here ends up being 0.08537 amps squared multiplied by the resistance value we have there which was 38.68 ohms And that gives me 0.2819 uh, watts. Okay. Now what's interesting on this circuit, and I tell you what, I, I won't do the rest of it, but you can go through and you know how much power the source is delivering, the source being 18.1 volt source right here, you know that it's delivering basically 18.1 volts times 0.98 amps, right? That's how many amps it's producing. And that's the total amount of power being supplied by the source. If you ran through and found the power dissipated by each one of these resistors and added those all up, you would find the same amount of power dissipated as if you uh, if, as if you, uh, well, the same amount of power dissipated as what was supplied by the source. And so I challenge you to do that. It's actually not that hard to do now that we've broken this down. Hopefully, though, this has been valuable for you to see a problem where you get data from multimeters and how you can use that data along with Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law, and Ohm's law in order to uh, break down what you know about the circuit and, uh, and find some things things like resistances that you may not have been used to finding in that way. Hope you tune in again. So long.